and the idea is that Frederick will uh, so I don't know whether I should introduce the, the, the speakers of the introduction. Yes. Uh, so from uh, left to right, uh, Daria Tadushkova uh, from Higher School of Economic History, Intellectual Historian, uh, on her way to from Higher School of Economic History. Yes. Uh, Friedrich Kain from Steel Airport. I'm <laughs> 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 many biographies, uh, that is why I'm not very sure. So, uh, University of Erfurt, Max Weber, colleague. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, I will. Those are the And uh, me, Jan Solman, uh, uh, High School of Economics in Moscow, Paradise Institute for Theoretical Studies and Historical Studies in Humanities. Uh, and exactly, we prepared the conference and we'll say a few words about how the conference was structured, what our ideas were, and how it's located on the, the scientific, social, political continuum. Uh, and then we'll uh, go have a fly and change to Bernhardt, who will then make a theoretical introduction to the conference the first thing. You know. uh, so uh, we talked yesterday about how, how we do it, and uh, Frederick will start by situating the conference in our previous endeavors, and then I will, uh, then I will say something about how this idea, this conference came to, uh, came to being, and then Nasha will say a bit more about the structure of the conference and our ideas of the questions for the discussion. So, Frederick. Thank you. So, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear, uh, dear friends and colleagues, uh, welcome to this workshop uh, during which we will speak about post-truth um, or what's beyond post-truth and specifically, specifically about media landscapes in the age of insecurity. I have the honor to make a few introductory remarks on central thoughts um, for organizing this workshop. Um, and I will link this uh, to a very short introduction into the larger context of this workshop. Um, a couple of days ago, or last week, last week Sunday, um, the elections to the European Parliament in uh, Strasbourg um, took place, and before a lot of, uh, of things were going on on Facebook, the platform was busy um, presenting measures to not have elections corrupted by bots and trolls, to prevent governmental players from outside the European Union to influence the election um, in somewhat disguise, or at least, um, or at least in Germany, uh, to check with courts whether certain campaigning content of extremist parties, mostly from the right, needed to be blocked or, um, or they seemed or were deliberately hurtful towards certain social groups, as for example immigrants. Similar problems um, are being discussed every time elections um, are being held now, if in Germany or in the United States, in Ukraine or also Russia, of course. The role of classic media, the internet and specific perhaps new actors is being discussed widely. Although we have a focus on Russia at this workshop, I want to illustrate this with an anecdote from last week's Germany. A couple of days before the elections to the parliament, a German YouTuber, Rezo, his name, uploaded a 55 minutes long clip with the title Zerstörung der CDU, Destruction of the CDU, aka the uh, party of Chancellor Merkel. In this video, the, 20, the about 20 year old youngster with blue dyed hair, an orange sweatshirt and a baseball cap talked about uh, what he identified as key issues to the political debate, such as, uh, such as climate change, the gap between the poor, the rich, etc. And he mostly blamed the CDU, um, the party, um, for the, the of the CDU for the um, current state of affairs in Germany, um, especially for uh, the CDU uh, was um, part of most government governments during the last 40 years or so. Um, yet he also had his takes on the Social Democrats, so the other big party. What happened was, um, the video soon, um, even before the elections, um, got 5 million clicks on YouTube, and now they have, I think it's over 7 million last time I checked. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the political parties, um, especially the CDU, of course, seemed completely helpless. First, they announced uh, an own reaction video. Um, this clip was allegedly produced uh, by one of the young um, and, they said, hopeful uh, members of parliament of the party, but never released. And instead, they just uh, put online a 12 pages PDF file. So, very classic. <laughs> Um, this is, uh, or has been called, an embarrassing media strategy, of course. Um, and other more thoughtful uh, 
usually younger party representatives try to save their situations, uh, situation by calling the party to open up to new media and to apply, apply new strategies. Um, well, this could have stayed an unimportant episode if not the head of the party, Anilid Khan Karrenbaugh, had felt the urge to comment on this, saying that this video and its kind would harm democracy for they were uh, populist and could be used to influence elections um, from, a, from an unknown point. And she finished suggesting specific rules for the, the digital sector and also means to control whether these rules are safe. And from there, a very broad discussion uh, took off in which um, um, the party had was blamed for suggesting media control, censorship, and a complete misunderstanding of the younger part of society and the specific forms of language, media habits, or culture in general. Um, well, I'll leave it with this, but I think you, you get the, the broad idea. Whatever re repercussions uh, this episode might still bring, it shows how quickly discussions serve nowadays when different media techniques, political approaches, public speech, etc. collide. Um, yeah, the episode clearly shows how traditional parties cannot, or cannot, yet cope with changes on the phenomen phenomenological side of political discussions. And we organizers have the feeling that this needs to be described in systematic terms and theorized. In you. So the question is how do these firms as terms as fake news, alternative facts, counter-truth, etc., etc., actually work? How can they be understood from the perspective of historical epistemology? And which effects do these terms, uh, which seem to not have their origins in academic epistemology, have on how works, historians, sociologists, um, literature, literature scholars, etc.? And it is surely too easy to dissolve them in a grey zone of uh, post-truth or something. Um, ben and David will talk about, um, suggest some, some terms a uh, little bit. Um, I won't go too much into detail now. I just want to briefly allude to some uh, to, to the history of, um, of this workshop or what we have done so far. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to see many familiar faces here, uh, which I have seen at several other recent meetings. This goes to the fact that our workshop may be counted as a part of a larger research context that some of us organizers have been working on together over the course of the last two or three years. In November 2017, Dieter Tüchter, uh, Bernhard Kleber, yes, um, and Jan Zulman and Rani uh, started out to investigate what we called East European epistemologies in the 20th century. And at the first workshop in, in Erfurt in Germany, we conducted collected epistemological projects that uh, were worked out in the first half of the 20th century, uh, specifically or mostly in Eastern, Central, or Southeastern Europe. Our goal was to contextualize important theories and methods that the histori historiography of science and knowledge, or more broadly speaking, cultural studies, are using very much today. There is, for example, the reflex connections uh, to the very unique milieu of interwar relief. Mannheim's uh, early socialization in Budapest or Emmanuel Bade's situation in Prague. We wanted to trace if and how certain contexts, context, concepts can be explained uh, from their specific spatial temporal constellations. But half a year, a year later, last was it June or July, anyway, uh, June, uh, we, we completed in Moscow the High School of Economics in order to pose a similar question yet with a different focus. We now specifically ask for the political epistemologies of Marxism between 1917 and 1968. Um, of course, we focused on Soviet states. And the third meeting, which we held in effort again last October, we followed the logical and chronological trajectory to ask for changes in the politics of epistemology or epistemologies since the 1960s, and specifically of the transformation period um, around 1989-1990. Um, this brings me to today and tomorrow, um, where one, we want to attach to this program and to strengthen specific questions connected to the way how truth, or rather global notions of truth, who knows, can be theorized today. Our perspective, which was mainly uh, informed by the history of science, historical epistemology, needs to be expanded here. I'm happy that today's and tomorrow's presentations will be from a wide range of different academic backgrounds, which I think is uh, 
necessary if we talk about contemporary robots. About these and other specificities, uh, specifics for local organizers um, know much more than I do. And before um, I pass word to them, I uh, would like to thank Kaya Kutushkova, Jan Soman, and um, our local host, Ilya Kadimi, which I, whom I haven't met, is he here? No. Um, um, yeah, I'd like to ask you to help uh, thank them for uh, having us and organizing these two days. Uh, yeah. okay, I would say afterwards I would uh, more or less uh, our idea <coughs> how this conference uh, emerged. Uh, and of course, talking about social media and new media uh, is very specific also. I will talk about the difference between Germany and Russia. And of course, the conference had to uh, emerge in the social media. It actually emerged as a reaction to uh, Dasha's comment on Facebook. Uh, I think to our to October conference, when Dasha wrote that, yeah, let's make something, post post let's make something similar here in Russia. Uh, so basically, from this small comment on Facebook, uh, we uh, developed a conference. And we'll look how this, you know, a short text can be then uh, produce a larger discourse. Uh, but for the context, one thing is interesting and I think very important. Uh, when we were talking, when Friedrich was talking about the CDU, CSU, and uh, the uh, misunderstanding of the uh, of the media uh, in Germany, the difference with Russia is that the government does understand media very well. So we basically have a very different uh, media uh, setting here. Uh, and exactly what we are talking about in a lot of modernity is uh, if you are talking about you know, different connections between food regimes uh, and media landscapes, uh, I think it's very important really to con context contextualize them uh, and to escape from uh, certain kinds of uh, linear stories which are which were haunting us to the modernization theory. And I still, I still think that they haunt us uh, through certain conceptualizations in politology. Uh, political studies in sociology and so on and so on, uh, in a way uh, in which certain concepts are uh, constructed from the very Western or West oriented point of view. Uh, and from the very, very beginning, uh, our idea was uh, the series of the conferences already, uh, as Fredrik was outlining, was uh, to make, to look at the social, uh, at the specific context uh, of uh, emergence of, context, uh, of concepts, uh, political concepts, social concepts, epistemological concepts. Uh, uh, we, in the context which we very roughly from the beginning of described as uh, Eastern European, uh, as Soviet, as Marxist, and so on. Uh, and now we try to escape this uh, generalization of, of uh, contextual situations uh, and basically ask the question uh, from the point of view of context, uh, of, of a special context, concept, a post truth. Uh, how problematic this concept is and how much we have to actually open and localize it. Uh, but we ask it exactly to look at the, uh, how can we work with this one concept from uh, specific constellation from our discipline. So the, the conference from the beginning on uh, was to be very multidisciplinary. Uh, for many reasons we uh, then uh, didn't involve artists, but at some point in time there was an idea to how to involve artists. So we really want to have uh, this view of post truth from many disciplines, uh, from many concepts, contexts, uh, also from disciplinary socializations and uh, country-specific socializations. Uh, so we are talking exactly about uh, opening certain containers and trying to uh, find out what is uh, exactly understood when we are talking, or more or less what we understand when we are talking about post truth. Uh, and exactly when we were talking about the conference, I mean, it was a year ago, so of course everyone was uh, uh, discussing Trump uh, and his tweets uh, and the way uh, this one actually works as, uh, as politics. Uh, and the second case was uh, the case of uh, Babchenko. Uh, and about Babchenko, we'll talk a bit more, uh, we tell a bit more, and then uh, today we'll also have, uh, uh, tomorrow at the, uh, at the afternoon, uh, we'll have a discussion of uh, Babchenko at the very end of the conference. I'm actually at the end of what I wanted to say, and I wanted to give the floor to Dasha. <laughs> uh, uh, he's dealing with technical resolutions. So, uh, so. Okay. Uh, yes, I will now. I'm kind of standard right now. Uh, 
uh, basically, so, yeah, you're going to know about the US. Yeah, the case of Bob Chekos, so exactly, to improvise on last year in the context of the, of the conference, uh, when uh, a guy kind of Bob Chekos was killed, it was actually exactly happening at the time uh, of, of our conference. Uh, uh, I think most of you know the story. Uh, uh, a very important Russian journalist who emigrated to Kiev to escape the Russian uh, second services uh, gets killed. Uh, it's in all the media, mostly on, face I mean, on Facebook, everyone is shocked. Uh, and then within three days, it actually turns out that he was alive, that the, the whole situation was a setup. Uh, no one knew about it, uh, not even his family was talking about it. Uh, we knew about it and it was exactly to find out who is, who is trying to, uh, to eliminate him. Uh, and what the situation actually showed is that the discussion was extremely fast uh, on Facebook. Uh, so basically, I actually missed most of it, uh, so I didn't know, you know, the, the whole shock that people were in. Uh, and for me, it was very, very characteristic because uh, my use of media, uh, also in a way because I'm socialized in Germany, and German use of social media is a very conservative one, uh, and the Russian use of social media is really very, very different, and it also produces a different uh, perception of truth, uh, a, a different perception of what information is, of what certified information. Uh, and exactly this case of Babchenko is a very starting point for thinking about uh, the question of post truths uh, of security, uh, of information acceleration. So all the questions uh, we have in the abstract which we will be discussing uh, during the days. And exactly with this case we will then uh, finish uh, with uh, Shotyelev's uh, movie about Babchenko uh, called One Night in Social Networks, when exactly this problem of acceleration of information and security, what is happening, uh, will be discussed from an artistic perspective. And with this, I think I can give the floor to Dasha, who will tell a bit more about the public conference. Yes, yeah, so uh, I would like to make the story a bit more short. <laughs> uh, so, yes, um, I will just trace some, I'll find some, some, uh, some questions. Uh, as you may see, uh, we have six sections and uh, some tough agenda brief. Um, I'm still thinking that um, the real and authentic uh, conference about post-truth uh, might be the fake one, um, but we still have uh, too many speakers <laughs> to, uh, to cancel them. Um, uh, yes, I will also uh, want you to uh, take a glance on this uh, unfortunately, our second key speaker uh, will not be able to come to the conference, so that's why we replaced uh, his uh, paper with, um, with a film uh, made by um, uh, the activist group named Stadiat. Uh, and it will take place uh, uh, tomorrow at uh, 5, 5 p.m. Uh, I think I'm the same group, or maybe we will go to the uh, same group uh, inside the group. Or maybe not the group. Or maybe not the group. We'll update you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> some words about the plans on the, on the conference and the structure. Uh, as we know, in 2016, Oxford Dictionary named post truth and World of the Year. And the topic is definition and quoting. The story is denoting circumstances in which objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion that appeals to emotion and personal view. So we're told, uh, basically we're told by experts that um, in the post-truth era we're facing the uh, problem of emotion, replacing the figure of facts, and fate replacing news. So political observers state that we have entered so-called post-truth effort and there is no coming back. Uh, but what does it actually mean? Uh, because the prefix post explicitly signalized for us that truth seems to be no longer relevant. And in the circumstances, the analyze of how the art, uh, in my humble opinion, provided more than uh, five uh, decades ago in, in her article, Truth and Politics, become more and more crucial. I'm quoting. Um, the result of a consistent and total substitution of lies for factual truth is not that the lies will now be accepted as truth and the truth be uh, defamed as lies, but that the sense by which we take our bearings in the real world and the category of truth or faithful 
is not the mass or means to the stand. It's being destroyed. Uh, so how should we um, actually be dealing with the rise of this new sensibility, which creates emotional reactions and personal opinions higher than the strong evidence or credible information? So one of the aims of this conference is to embrace the spectrum of the question we derive from the current posture situation with a special focus on its uh, uh, specific vagueness. It's not clear what the term is, post truth. Uh, that's why we decided um, to make this conference fully dedicated to the problematization of the set of phenomena usually called post truth, and want to locate the constellation, uh, constellation in which various phenomena are thought together as post truths and in which they begin to exert influence on our life. Um, so, the media constellation, from newspapers to Facebook, from cinema to YouTube. Uh, it's crucial to us in this regard, and this is why we decided to put them at the center of our conference. Our keynote and the first session uh, will undertake the task of opening the container of those truths in terms of the yes, um, in different ways, but uh, with a common critical gesture. Uh, so, our key, uh, key speaker, Bernard Kleber, uh, will begin with the outline of the problem of disintegration of epistemologies. Um, and then, um, as different as advertisement and documentary movie making may seem, uh, topic of our second session of the conference, they deal with the influence of stability and instability on our perception, as to say with media and media acceleration of information. Uh, this influence of acceleration, the dilution of two figures, um, temporal speed or, or, or Facebook thread, or pictorial flood of images on Instagram and YouTube videos will be then analyzed uh, on Tuesday morning. Yeah. Uh, truth and post truth are political, and so the third and fifth um, sections uh, will be analyzing political actors um, and uh, strategies, um, political actor strategies, sorry, to delimit truth and to claim possession of it. Um, political regimes want to own their own truth and so their opponents and so different strategies of rationalization of, own, uh, of their claims and of their representation in various media will be important. Uh, and I would love to, love to mention that uh, the case studies will embrace uh, equally Ukraine, uh, Russia and uh, French as well. Uh, so in the last session we will turn to another situation, that of the fall of the Soviet Union and its representation in popular music, um, not to by musicians who didn't experience the Soviet epoch directly, uh, and who use this imaginary past uh, as a critical tool to talk about the present. And we'll finish the talk of the day um, with the insight into the conspiracy theories of the um, uh, 90s, and um, we'll hear how uh, and if conspiracy is transgressed and post-truth dualism.